also view around. And that's exactly the bounding rectangle of the shape. So the minimum rectangle that the shape will fit in. This is what it really like give me all the post boxes in my own town. Uh, would produce uh, as we saw it said in older versions of mass code. And on the right side is what you really want. You only get the shapes inside the outer shape. So as we now finally have this missing piece, this missing feature, uh, spatial data in MySQL and MyDB has actually become usable. It has been usable for a few edge cases before, but this is really what makes it usable. There's still a limitation that is not fixed yet. Um, that is that uh, the spatial model is still assuming that everything is flat. Like our areas is just a flat map. So a few things still do not work like proper distance calculation. But for most use cases, it is good enough. Um, we also have geometry support in all storage engines, but we only have spatial indexes in my sensor park. And there's a few things coming up in MariaDB, like the missing projections, or higher precision calculations, so you don't have rounding, uh, rounding arrows, so now you have shapes that are touching each other. Um, support for 3D coordinates, so that can also store um, altitude information in geography and <coughs> geography data later. Uh, there's still a few functions missing that are required by the standard. It's going to come. And the theory optimizer is become more aware of spatial indexes. All of this is on the roadmap for MariaDB 10.1. And a few other things are on the list, but not with a different uh, timeline yet, like spatial indexes for other storage engines, like true 3D calculations. So you can not only have a uh, geography with elevation, but can bring like 2D shapes like cubes or pyramids, or whatever. And there's also a roadmap for some client side optimization, so that certain calculations can be offloaded to the client instead of having to be done on the server side. So uh, I've been planning to play with these features for a long time. The main obstacle was that there is no real good large data set to play with. Um, so that's where my hobby comes in, that's all the speed map. Who knows what the street map is? Okay, so we can make this quick. It's a project started by Steve Coast in the UK almost 10 years ago. It's freely on geography data under open license. Has over many contributors by now, more than active, but that's the number of accounts that have signed up. And by now we have over 2 billion map nodes. So points in the database. So we have to switch to 64-bit IDs lately. We're running out of 32-bit ones. And we have 200 million ways that the streets is building shapes, that is waters, rivers, whatever. And about 2 million relations that describe more complicated things like um, administrative borders, Buildings that belong together on a site like a campus or hiking or bus routes. And we also have a lot of people who do not actively edit all the statement but provide GPX tags that we can use to generate map data. So that's a pretty good data set for now. And that leads to a lot of interesting maps. If you look at um, the campus here, on the very left side you have the Google and Bing maps of the university. <coughs> and in the two right columns, you have different kinds of rendered OpenStreetMap tiles, and all focus on a specific uh, topic, like the one 
in the upper middle is the default rendering. The upper right is especially for pedestrians. So put small focus on uh, footways, not so much on the main roads. And show things like uh, benches. Lower middle is a uh, map with special uh, public transportation overlay. And lower right is the watercolor map that is more for its artistic kind of pleasure, but not so much for really <coughs> finding a way of it. But that's all possible if you have the raw map data. And not just the uh, graphic tiles that you get them from Google or from me. Um, the other things you can do once you have the data that is one big topic is routing, not only for cars but also for bicycles, pedestrians. Uh, you can do coverage check. Like in Germany, we have sort of a rule that if you live in a residential area, the next post box should not be farther away from you than one kilometer. So having the data of where post boxes are, if all of them got collected for stigma, you can check if your postal service really provides the amount of post boxes that it is supposed to. <coughs> uh, all the speed members always will be used in at least one flight simulator to provide more realistic um, landscape rendering. And it's also used in science, like on the map on the right, that is a map of all the main river systems in Germany. Um, each color is for one of the main rivers that runs into the North or East, or Baltic Sea. And if you zoom into the map, you can say for every, every little village you see, you can say this is connected to this river and ends up in, in the North Sea of the Baltic. Like the green spot there is the Kuba Visa, the dark blue is the Rhine, the upper orange is the Elbe and the lower orange brown is the donor. So the interesting thing is you can really be done with the kind of data, but for that we first have to have it in the database to work. And um, in the main OpenStreetMap database itself, we only have very simple information. We only have three data types, one's a point or a node. It can be a point of interest or part of a way. We have ways, and ways can be things like streets. But they can also describe areas, like a pedestrian area, a lake, or a building, if it is a loop without. Way is a closed loop, but not all closed loops are areas. So you have to have context information to tell you, is this an area or not? And we have relations that can be used to group other things together. And all the data types can have extra key value by us, this attribute information. That's true for nodes. That's true for ways. Ways also have an ordered list of all the nodes that form a way. So way is just always a straight line connecting our collection of of nodes, there is no, no such thing as a circle in nodes. And we have the relations that can contain any number of nodes, ways, and other subrelations. And this is the main database that is where all the uh, primary data is stored. And it's the database you modify when you use one of those different editors and it is optimized for the purpose. So we won't even get direct access to the database or any dumps to the database. You only get access via a web API that the editors use to download certain parts of the map and the upload changes. And for everything else, there is what we call the Bennett file, that is a set of large files that is Created out of the main database once a week. Um, originally, that used to be an XML based format, but now that has to be on so big. So the current exports are 
vorne Gigabytes auf uncompressed XML or 32 by Gigabytes compressed. There is now also an alternative format based on Google Gotova performance that is about 32, uh, 33, uh, 23 <laughs> gigabytes right now and is more compact and can be put the process faster than using XML. And if you do not want to deal with the whole planet data, you can have um, regional extracts that are provided by the third parties, like here from Wiki Germany, who provide the um, extracts for almost all countries in the world. So, as the raw data is mostly meant for being good for the editing applications, there are several tools that convert that into the more usable format. For example, uh, extract only features that are actually interesting for what you want to do with the data. Like only extract what is useful for a map or for a group in other rooms. Big noise or extra noise. And there's some pre-processing to find out if I have a close way, is it really uh, an area or is it just a circular way? And it also takes relations of objects and puts them into, into one shape, like a bus route that consists of several road segments that spans across different roads that becomes one extra line shape. And there are several applications that do this pre-processing, and one of them is goes into PGSQL, which I'm not going to focus on. Um, that is an application of student in C, small bit of C++, that is able to read both open street and export formats, XML format, and your protocol file one. Uh, we process it to extract large relations and shapes um, or store that in another set of relation data, a uh, relation of database tables more suitable for things like rendering maps or whatever information you want to, to deal with. And originally, as you can see by the name, it was meant to be for postages only, but I now have a version that mostly works with this nice girl and I'm really able to. Um, this is what the, uh, what the thing looks like in its schematic form. It was meant to be modular, it has a input front end. Uh, it's actually two input plugins for the different file formats. It has an output back end and it has a middle layer that is used for in caching while Processing happens. But originally, the middle and upper player had strong dependencies on uh, postgres, and also the main module had a few postgres dependencies. So you could not just write a new output module and have that working on the postgres one. Um, so, okay, skip that one. So porting this to to MySQL has been more tricky than originally thought because I have to remove the dependencies of the form parts of the tool and have to expect some things that were not actually specific but would be useful uh, mandatory for other output backends too so that I could uh, reuse them. Um, I now have the output side uh, ready, but still having a crash in the middle layer. So what the middle layer does, it can store into RAM, but works. Or it can use store into intermediate database tables. That works with postages, but not with um, I really need my scope. So imports work as long as the input file is small enough that it fits into the memory of the machine. Um, that is for my 16 gigabyte machine at home that is big enough to import all the data for Germany, which is one of the 
the kind of countries with the most people of my data in OpenStreetMap. So it's good enough for most other European countries too. Um, actually, I'm going to use right now importing all European countries on my one while I'm away. But I still haven't reached my goal to have the full planet imported yet. But having all of Germany is good enough to have the data set that is found for real world experiments. So, what I have now is an import tool that takes about four times to five times as long to import the same amount of data as the original Postgres version. And that is mostly because the Postgres version does not actually generate uh, SQL statements, it uses the, the copy mechanism. The Postgres, which is a uh, command that tells the uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to send you SQL anymore now, but a format that is more or less like you see, just a text limited table uh, format that is easy to pass. And what I also see with the original import, uh, the import tool is running at 100% CPU, with my port it's only running at about 50% CPU, because it has to wait for the database. So one easy thing would be to import to the processor in this version of the master um, so instantly have the script that the process could then be unprecedented. What I'm almost also seeing is actually creating special index. It's faster in master and it's going to go to this side. So there's a little bit on that end. I can't tell the editor that, that also holds when things become I/O bound because right now I can only import things that go fit into main memory. But we have the whole work we set in main memory. So when the sketches are long, the disk is never hit. Um, now this is the query that generated from uh, the picture I had at the beginning, all of those boxes in my hometown. Just a very rough pattern. I could only do before small subset because I have to do it. So we can all the first one. That's the only thing. The second one, the parking. We're doing it with the raw import data. We can all the two. We can parking so that we have to do it. It turns out the mask is going to be actually twice as fast as the that is not because this interpretation is better though. And this is this really more or less leads to full table scan. And that is where my scan is all Once I add indexes on the name and the amenity fields, the thing turns a bit. Uh, my reading performance goes down to about two tenths of a second. And it's the same for my scale too. And both this it goes down to 400. So we're about an order of magnitude off. What still is shows that it's a usable approach. Um, well, so the thing is, if you want to start this project from uh, scratch, um, have the choice of the database, you may still be better off with both this, but it's if so far the choice was to run Postgres and MySQL side by side, you now have all the necessary pieces to be able to say, okay, we can have this in the one database we already have. Um, if that's about it, these are the URLs for the time from the import code of this digital and all the map side that were mentioned earlier in the slides. Um, the last URL that is where I'm going to upload all the country imports I'm doing right now on my machine at home. Um, that's another one which we have on my side because we have our architecture independent uh, disk file format. 
you can just take these pre imported table files, just copy them into an existing master installation, and use them right away. It doesn't matter what lift size your machine is, what your operating system is. It's it's useful by the way, so you don't have to actually deal with the import tool, you can just use pre imported tables. Just, just time to answer yes, uh, are there any questions or could show one working example if there is good example, okay. <laughs> so um, this is a very small web interface that just sends our queries to the database gets uh, geometry data back in the so-called well-known text format. Uh, the map library that we're using here called OpenLatus, that is able to uh, parse the uh, well-known text format and put it on the map right away. So that's what it used to generate the maps I had earlier because it was a thing. So, This would just select the border of my own town, the town that is said to be non-existent. But there it is, green. And Yeah. 